<laughs> this is this is my my vision right here. This is my first yeah. time with this setup, and I was like, you know what? I could do this little side profile. Maybe do some screens. Like I got the shot with all the gold, uh, you know, gamer oh, cool. tags that you got. Which, okay, I like that. That's pretty gangster. <laughs> I'm sitting here with Mega Ran and MC Lars. What's going on, guys? Yo, what's going on? Thanks for having us, man. What's yeah. up, Tucson? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. been a long time. It's my first time meeting Lars. Uh, and I've obviously uh, met Rand a couple times before. I had you on my show up True. in Phoenix. And every time uh, I check base with you, you're all over the place. <laughs> like literally globetrotting, hitting up different, what is it, Comic-Con conventions, gaming conventions, doing shows, especially there. Do they lock into you that much where you're literally going uh, as a featured act at every single kind of... Not every single one, but there's, there's so many now. Like when I first started in 2007, there were maybe three in right. the country and now there's probably like 50 so if i'm at 10 of them you know what i mean that's still a really good good move so yeah. they're popping up everywhere which is awesome just seeing how nerd culture geek culture has exploded right and and most importantly that people are open to to music that kind of reflects that culture where a lot of times people are like well just because i like comics doesn't mean i like a song about the comic you know right so so people have been a lot more open to it than uh than i even expected so uh we get around to some conventions and stuff Lars, you did. Um, you still call it nerdcore? Well, <laughs> Lars, you started off with, like mashing up like emo yeah. music and making like emo hip hop in a way. Now you could say that the SoundCloud rappers, there was you know some rappers like that, like Lil Peep would kind of go. They would call it emo punk in a way. Mm. Um, but you actually incorporated bands with strong like you know vocal hooks and rapping yeah. on that. What? How did you describe your music when you first started doing it? I used to call it. I still do post punk laptop rap. Laptop rap, yeah. Because yeah. then, like, I got my start like 2003. Yeah. And I was, you know, doing like raps about literature and pop culture and emo bands and ska bands. And Mega Rain and I linked at Comic Con in San Diego. What year? Uh, I think 09, right? Yeah, 08 or 09. Probably 09. Yeah. yeah. And that was like, right after your album dropped the, what, the Mega Rain 9? The Mega Rain 9, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep, good timing, and that was all just things that started rolling into into, like falling into position. And we played a really big show with Doom Tree out there yeah. during Comic Con, and that was really when I saw all the pieces coming together, like bands coming in from uh, outside, as well as with us being able to play with those bands, which was really dope. Right, and you saw you saw you guys were kind of on the same wavelength, but different. Yeah, yeah, Some we clicked. Different. We yeah. clicked, and we you know we've been internationally and played like most states in the US and it's just really fun to build with someone who's a hard worker and who has a unique take and that we can collaborate and like this tour has been an awesome reflection of that yeah you're getting mm -hmm. a lot of support well I mean your fans support you I just noticed that uh, you have a project together that you're going to release that you raised money up through Kickstarter you wanted 20 grand to do it you raised over 35 grand so Dang. congratulations on Dang. that thanks to the fans thank you yeah and that should be coming out did that come out already you said October it's coming into the tour um, we we just listened today to final mixes and it sounds so good. Yeah. So we're just going to make a couple of t finishing touches, but the Kickstarter backers will get it before end of tour. Yeah, that's cool. And, and then after tour, so it's actually one of, of those Kickstarters where they you know fall through. We actually promises. do the thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we and and we have a thing where some of the higher bitter, bitter fans can come hang out and eat dinner with us and watch sound check and get like exclusive merch and so we care about our fans because we would not exist without. That. Right. I mean, literally, there's literally, no label. Yeah. No, it's just us and our nerdy passions and our love of rapping. And <laughs> it's independent to the T, right? Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. So, yeah. but nowadays, you know, with all the uh, Patron, whatever the Patron, I call <laughs> Patreon, you know, the Patreon accounts mm -hmm. and everything, yeah. YouTube's, and you know, you're showing, you're seeing all these artists and, and content creators able to make a living just based off of people supporting it. Yeah. Uh, which is great because we kind of come full circle from being able to just rip it and steal it. Mm -hmm. Take it, you know, <laughs> and be like, oh, no, but we want more music from these guys. They need it. Uh -huh. So we'll just, yeah, like pay $50 <laughs> for this album. And fans still, they still can steal it. I mean, we we have pretty smart can. fans. So they right. come to shows and they'll even tell us, look, uh, I want to buy all your T-shirts because I I've stole stolen all your music for yeah. the past <laughs> 10 years. Yeah. And uh, now I want to pay you back, which is great, man. Steal Hell the yeah. music. Come to the concert. We haven't quite gotten the technology to, to steal t-shirts yet so yeah. um <laughs> until that happens come to the show man and then uh, that's all that matters to us is if you're there and you're bringing friends mm -hmm. and you enjoy the music that keeps us going right what's the biggest donation you got from this last kickstarter campaign i think a few grand right 
I think so. One was yeah. my laptop. I had just sent off my, my MacBook, which is where I recorded a lot of my music on. Yeah. And um, so the, the backing, I think it was two grand, where they got that in addition to all the other music that we've been working on, um, our full discographies and uh, things like that. We always do, there's usually like one or two really big, like super fan supporters right. that, that back us. And um, I had to say goodbye to my laptop, which was sad. but um, uh, yeah. Piece of history right there. Piece of history. <laughs> yeah. I've had that thing since 2012. Dang. You put it in work. Well, usually yeah. when you put together albums and stuff, there's usually an audio theme. You know, it started off with, obviously, when you made a splash, using um, Mega Man soundtrack. Correct. Uh, and then, you, of course, you did the Nintendo sounds and everything. You did WWE yeah. uh, sounds, which we'll touch on. Of course, you have your musical influences where you're mixing in, uh, you know, emo punk, pop punk. Mm -hmm. uh, so what's the sonic theme of mm. this record if there is one. Ooh. There's Tell them, Yeah, there's like three. Like, we have like classic boom bap kind of beats. We, okay. We went with some like modern kind of heavy like electronic sounding beats. Then there's some throwback like punk and we have a ska song even and like some like 80s metal stuff. Nice. So it's kind of it runs the gamut but it's, it's all over. It, but it still feels very cohesive. Yeah. And um, our theme is books because we're both English majors who yeah. have traveled and love to read so we took some of our teacher. favorite so yeah. took out some of our favorite books, short stories, graphic novels, poems, and turned them into like 12 banging songs. And nice. uh, I, I can't wait till people hear it. It's like Run the Jewels meets, I don't know, Reading Rainbow? I don't know. <laughs> there you go. I, like, uh, <laughs> I like songs based off books. Like one of uh, my favorite songs is All Jays Fits Pleasure, which is off of uh, based off of a book. Uh, mm. And so, and I can't tell you the book. I wish I, re I read more, but <laughs> what are the books? What like, book? what, what are some popular books that you may have covered in this album? Um, we it's did. It's a reading list right did now. Did Julius Caesar, Shakespeare's Julius Caesar play? Okay. Yeah. Uh, we, are we you going to start like a book club with this record? We should, right? We were thinking uh -huh. about that. Like, That's a good idea. Uh, just like at each concert, we could just like have a reading session and just have it. That would be really cool. Yeah. Like stop at local libraries. Yeah. Yo, it's a good idea. Yeah, I think yeah. we can do that. It's all my uh, idea, man. That's what I do. <laughs> yo. So uh, we did um, like classic books from Shakespeare to graphic novels like The Watchmen mm. to poems like uh, Ozymandias to... Um, Gosh, what else? We, Walden, Henry David Thoreau. The legend Sleepy Hollow. Sleepy Hollow. Oh, nice, yeah. So we go all over to classics, to new stuff. Um, it's it's like, it's something for everybody. Right. You know, if you're a, you're a young reader and you haven't read in a while, you'd be like, hey, I remember that one. Uh -huh. Or if you're a current reader, there's a lot of current books as well. So it's something for everybody. Well, and this isn't the first time you've done that. So, you, I mean, you've been doing basically theme songs here the past few years. Like you did Stranger Things, you did The Plot. Mm -hmm. Uh, and put that to song, um, you know. Uh, I I thought I, I had. I didn't know you knew about that word. <laughs> I'm all over it. Okay, come right. on now. All right. Um, I also saw that you discovered Auto Tune. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, if we were just talking about that, I was like, oh no. There's a song I did. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a little bit of a polarizing song, but I, I I did it for that reason. I think it's so important. We were just talking about it last night for Lars's podcast. That um, it's a wrestling theme. A, a song yes about the Bret Hart one Bret Hart yeah and uh, Bret Hart's story was very similar I think to, to what we go through as artists where we we're trying to stay true to what you are and who you are mm -hmm. but at the same time the world around you is changing I like that because and so you, you, you got to make that decision like do you do you conform a little bit or do you do you stay true to yourself and and watch the world just kind of turn its back on you so to speak so and that's, that's what a classic, to Bret. yeah that's the classic 1997 like uh, Beyond the Mat yeah. storyline of Bret Hart being like, hey, I'm the good guy. I keep acting like the good guy. <laughs> and then Stone Cold, all of a sudden, everyone wants to cheer for the bad guy. I'm not changing who I am, and now they're booing me. Exactly. Right. And so that's the where world. the song came from. It was like just taking that, and then um, uh, Mark Cooper did the beat, really great beat maker from Detroit. I'm playing a little bit of your auto tune here. Yeah? Yeah. Don't make me the bad guy. <laughs> I'm just praying that you don't make me the bad guy. Licensing rights. Come on, the, that's good stuff. The video for all the video with Brett and everything. No, um, we don't have clearance to use any of that uh, footage. It's uh, <laughs> a fa uh, fan tribute, right? It's it a, a tribute. tribute. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> Did you have fun messing with Auto Tune? Was that your first time? Big time. I had fun. Uh, Felix, my engineer, was like, "Man, just do it." And I, I remember thinking, "Like, ah, I don't think I should." And he's like, "Dude, I can tune it up. I can make it sound really good. You've got a great voice, and you already know a lot about staying on key." Right. So. I can just so do it. So you don't even really need it, but then we're going to splash it up, T-Pain it. Absolutely. T-Pain didn't need it. He's a great singer. I know. But it, it just it just sounds cool. And it was something new. Like, I've done 
hundreds and of songs in my life. So it's like, why not try something new? Right. That's where I am in 2018. I was try like, something when new. I saw it immediately, I was like, oh shit, he's gonna <laughs> try like, to mumble. <laughs> Dumb it down, try to get that money. <laughs> 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 Sorry, my what about uh, on this record, right? So you, since you're messing around all different genres, was there any mm. vocally challenging or vocally challenging parts where you're trying to stretch your vocals to kind of screw, like scream or sing more or Ooh. try to, you know, match Lars and his intensity? Mm. Like, uh, was there any kind of like delivery challenge? Actually, yeah, you know I, I mean? feel like we have two very yeah. different voices and vocal tones. You know, mm -hmm. he's very bright and high, and I'm kind of low and gruff. So trying to meet in the middle has been fun. Um, Gulliver's Travels is the one song we did where. It's a, it's a fun story, so I try to make sure I'm like da 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 ba ba, you know what I mean? Like giving it a little more bounce and and brightness. So so it's been a fun challenge, you yeah. know, working with somebody like Lars, who's a great songwriter, amazing with concepts, and um and yeah, like it was just super fun, just trying to meet somewhere in the middle as right. well as challenge each other. And I think that was super important. Like I remember finishing one song, and I was like, Lars, I killed this verse. Now, get in there and kill it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you th you're like okay now. Iron sharpens iron in this situation. Definitely. So I feel like that's that was the fun part about working together. Was there any parts where you kind of had to be like, oh, I got to rewrite my verse now after you heard his verse to the song or <laughs> vice versa? I mean, we we have a song. We do a song about Ozymandias, who's like the Egyptian uh, pharaoh who they find a statue in the desert. And it's like a metaphor that like despotic people, their reign doesn't live forever. Uh -huh. And so M Mega Rand's verse, like at first I, we approached it very literally. And yeah. Mega Rand shifted to make it kind of like political and like very topical. So I, I, I sharpened the references to make this, this Pharaoh tweets and hieroglyphics. He, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he's make Egypt great again. Like this whole, like <laughs> this whole, this whole to make it more relevant. And that was cool. Cause make Rand, like you made it really like topical and, and that was tight. That was fun. But nice, that's something yeah. that you always do with your records. Everything is usually very topical. Pop culture references are like super on point. And, um, and I felt like we needed to do that on this record, yeah. especially in the times we're in now. Yeah. Um, I feel like some things just have to be said, you know, whether right. it, whether uh, you know overtly or or within the concept of a of a song. I think like, you know, it's time to stretch our stretch our boundaries a little bit and stretch some muscles that we haven't necessarily used in a while. Right. So, how long did it take you guys to put together this album then? Because you've been on to, on the road Dang. now for what like a couple weeks. If yeah. That, yeah, so, and you recorded it before that, you're listening to final mixes, so sitting down with each other, chopping up, going through the beats, and then uh, recording and mixing it down. I'd say, I'd say, we, we worked on it for about a year. Yeah. We wrote for about a year. We, we ended up doing like 22 songs. We picked our favorite 12. But the awesome nice. thing about this was we were both in Brooklyn for a week and Mega Rand came and stayed with me and we recorded at our friend Brad's house. And usually rappers, you know, they send files when they collaborate. It was so fun to be in a room with him to be like roommates for a week and yeah. mm -hmm. not kill each other. Well, that's what I was wondering, like <laughs> yeah. how it was. I mean, obviously you're both on important. two different touring schedules. Yeah. And oh, just yeah. kind of going back and forth. But I yeah, made the time. I was like, if we need to do this. I was like, you know, I've collaborated in the past with folks, but it's been sending email files. And I was like, nah, we're going to, I'm going to block out a week. I'm gonna stay with you, and we're gonna get this done together. Yeah. That way, and it, and it, I think it, the results will show. Like the, the, the teamwork is just there. You right. know what I mean? And I think that that wouldn't have happened if we were just emailing back and forth. You know? Yeah. And on a technical level, using the same mics, like being in the same space, like the sonics of it gives it a unified taste. Like if we were to use different mics in different booths, you would kind of hear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, That's there's. True. I mean, there's definitely uh, people that have that ear, like audio nerds, mm -hmm. that would definitely be able to <laughs> depict it. And like, mm -hmm. yeah. So the, having the same equipment definitely goes a long way in, in creating cohesiveness in Big an album term. that flows from beginning to end. That's what we wanted. So, yeah, yeah that was super important. That's a good insight. Hey, yeah. you know, that's <laughs> what I like to do. Uh, <laughs> when you go down the YouTube rabbit hole, Lars, no. where you go, what, are, what are some of the things that you will kind of spend a couple hours <laughs> rotting your brain to? Well, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of, I love like, like obscure prank calls, like prank videos yeah, I love. Okay. <laughs> like we were listening to this guy Longmont Potion Castle in the van who who uh, like he calls Alex Trebek and says I've got this uh, UPS shipment of 3,000 pounds of sod it's a COD and like <laughs> driving people up the wall like that's to me that's like the funny adolescent part of myself that I I still it's like jerky boys yeah. I love the jerky boys mm -hmm. yeah 
He's he's put he's played all the Jerky Boys during our yeah. tour. <laughs> yeah. That's your inspiration, right? So, yeah. I mean, it's funny stuff. Like, man. what's the last album you listen to, Jerky Boys? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kids today are like, who? Yeah. Who? I know. They don't get it. <laughs> That's, That's okay. True. Oh man. And every time I also um, <laughs> see you pop up on social media, you're hanging out with Xavier Woods. Ah. Uh, I'm gonna play a little bit of this real quick. Gotta play a little bit of this wrestling because I want to know. <laughs> Oh, the rap battle. Oh, God. Uh, All the infamous rap battle, which I actually will say, and I'm a, I'm a big fan of like King of the Dot, things like that. I like that. Uh, I like rap battles. Um, so then going like this. Chucky mm-hmm. Cheeks. Doing it acapella style, doing it the right way. I like that they chose to do it this way. Yeah. It actually worked. It worked out really well. And the Us- Usos did really Usos good, Usos killed too. it, man. They, they, they did you killed see this? It. Yeah, yeah. What the hell they gonna talk about, Oos? I don't know, unicorns and stampedes. What we gonna talk about, Oos? Big E's, double D's, how you look like Whoopi, and how you say you 5'5", five five, but you really 5'3". We'll talk about oh. that later. We'll talk- <laughs> now, uh, doing tag team, a tag team battle rap like that, that's even that's more- That's like some skills, man. Yeah, like, that's like actual theater. That's stage play stuff. It was really good. Like, And they're, they're brothers, so I feel like they're all, already on the same wavelength. They're twin brothers, Twins. so yeah, they have the advantage there. So they got that twin magic, but man they killed it and um it's funny that they wrote in to the for the uh, battle to end with like a dust up like a disqualification because they started kind of getting each other's faces mm-hmm. and um and I'm, and when we left this, the the ring big e was like man i'm so glad that they didn't like let the crowd decide uh-huh. because i think the crowd would have picked the usos, usos who were the bad guys but i feel like they would have picked them because they kind of went there a little more you know they did that mm. i felt like the usos won that rap battle yeah. you know now did, where were you i mean obviously you're on uh, stage right I was standing there behind those guys <laughs> but did you help in putting together well, the bars i did not help i was there Ghost to right? no i was there to uh <laughs> what do they call it just kind of give constructive feedback are you just saying that now because new, the new day lost There's, and you're not gonna admit <laughs> i can't to admit a, right to writing <laughs> losing bars yeah you don't want to you, you know, want to lose to the usos who don't rap at I all this is your job right man. i can't admit that i wrote no um honestly it was it was pretty surreal being backstage but like they they pulled me to the side and were like hey Let's go in this room and practice, and we want you to hear what we got. Yeah. And you know, you're the rapper, so give us your opinion. And so they're they're rapping it, and I was like, oh, that's good. Work on your timing a little bit here. Give this a pause so people can react, and then hit them with the punchline. You know, yeah. so that's it. It was just very little minute things. I mean, these guys work TV and mics all day long. Right, they so got that part down. They got that. So yeah. um, it was really cool. I was like, you know what, the crowd will react to. Roman Reigns, if you mention him, or something like that. You know, yeah. guys that'll get a get a reaction out of the crowd. So that's all I did. I just gave suggestions, and then John Cena walked into the room like out of nowhere. <laughs> it was really crazy because he um, wants to know because obviously that's how he built his whole career. The very last time they did a rap battle, it was him. Uh-huh. So John came in the room and was like, "Hello, uh, just want to tell you guys I'm proud of you. Uh, it's been a long time since super done white, right? Rap battles, super, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, uptight John <laughs> you know, Cena, yeah, very very company guy, and uh, and he's <laughs> like." You know, I'm proud of you guys. You're doing great work. And I was like, oh, John, I thought you were coming in to, like, drop some bars. Right. Like, like you were going to jump into this match to be the, uh, you know, Dr. Thugonomics again. And he's like, no, sir. Um, Rap is a young man's game. (laughs) And uh, I will. I know when to quit. So uh, you guys go ahead out there and kill it. (laughs) That's too funny. It was pretty great. Oh, you guys are doing the the hip hop. The hip hop. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know the hip hop. But yeah, so that was good. I seen you on the Vegas trip celebrating with the New Day uh, when they won their championship. I mean, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Xavier Woods is just he's been a, such a good friend to me for many years before before WWE before a lot of that before TNA. Uh, around the TNA time is okay. when he hit me up. He was he's just a big gamer like myself. Yeah. So we we got together on the love of video games when he got to uh, before it was NXT. It was Florida Championship Wrestling. Yeah. So he left. Uh, TNA to go to Florida Championship and we went there they allowed the wrestlers to pick their own entrance music right and he starts searching on the internet for Mega Man music and then he found me and he's like listening through and he's like yo this is so good so he emails me like hey man um, just wondering if you will let me use one of these songs and I was like absolutely so there's like a few old videos of him coming out to my music nice and then WWE buys them and, and then he's like dude things are happening real fast here I don't know what's going on but WWE just bought our company and they they like us they say that they might move us up and and then the rest of this happens you know and longest reigning tag team championship ever uh-huh. like you know just hmm. all kinds of just just a um, million fi- million uh, subscribers on YouTube yeah the up up down down like, which is entertaining to watch as well. so much cool yeah. stuff man and, and a lot of that is, has been 
Xavier's brainchild. Like oh, he's yeah. literally like the brains behind a lot of the cool stuff where a lot of guys are getting suggested ideas from management. He's coming to them with ideas yeah. that have not only worked out, but made a lot of money. Mm-hmm. So they listened to him, and uh, he's a real smart guy. Well, he had to do it or he would have been cut. You know, yeah. I mean, he was at the point where they showed the behind the scenes. Like, he was about to get cut. Triple H said, no, we're keeping him. Yeah. Uh, because, obviously, as a PhD, he's a very smart guy. He's a creative guy. Yeah. And then it creates a new day, which you know it's his brainchild. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, boom, it's good. takes off. I know. Mm-hmm. So, very yeah. proud of that dude. And um, all those guys, man. Just great talents who um, just continue to re- reinvent, recreate themselves. And you Anyone think- backstage that you don't like that's like a real-life heel to you? Vince McMahon. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, I No, I mean, I don't know these people enough to not like anybody. Right. Sometimes I wonder, though, like, because of their TV personality, I'll be like, I'm not approaching that guy. Like, Randy Orton. I'll be, yeah. like, I'll be like, I'm not approaching him because he always looks so serious, you know? And yeah. um, and I've had people say, like, well, if he's in a good mood, it'll be fine. But if not, you might want to get away, you know? So, right. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know these guys like that. So I think that I like to stay out of their way. Like, if I'm ever backstage, I'm like, get the heck out of the way. And uh, let them do their thing, right. and just kind of observe from the side. You, <laughs> you getting know. Lars into wrestling yet? I've been a little bit. We uh, we listen to wrestling podcasts, and uh, I've learned a me, lot from you. He knows now some wrestling terminology. We right, right. Are you still about, on the uh, "It's fake"? Why are we watching this? <laughs> uh, you know what? I've always been a big fan of like the Insane Clown Posse and that world. We actually played the Gathering of the Juggalos mm-hmm. this summer. Oh yeah, yes. what, both of you did. Yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and we and they're big in wrestling. So so much of the terminology, like I. I know it from being intimately yeah, familiar with their albums. It's in their songs, yeah. 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 So so I, I respect it, and like I, I see it as like storytelling and art, and, and the, the athleticism is impressive. Mm-hmm. Oh, so I don't, it's it's not, I don't see it as fake, I just see it as very, uh, this amazing zeitgeist of the culture that through social media, it's able to have these legs and become this unifying archetypal thing, which is, what's the term you're talking about when people have to keep the story going? Kayfabe. Yeah, we kayfabe. talked about that today. Like, yeah. That's awesome. The keeping it, yeah. making people, like, living the story. Mm-hmm. You know, to the point where people don't know what's real or what's not. And that's the best TV. Yeah. When you think, oh, man, yeah. that guy really doesn't like that guy. Yeah, you know? and then making the people who know it's not real second guess themselves. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, that yeah. seems like that's the real deal. Did you see Violent J try to drop kick Fred Durst? Yeah, yeah, Shaggy. Oh, oh, Shaggy, Shaggy too right? yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. Violent J's not getting in here. I even wonder, though he lost some weight. I wonder if I wonder if that because you know their new album that comes out on the October twenty sixth is called Fearless Fred Fury. Mm-hmm. And you know, Fred Durst had done has done stuff with ICP and they've worked together. If this was like a publicity thing. Right. Because uh-huh. Shaggy is pretty good at wrestling. Like he missed that kick. By quite a margin, and I think that yeah. I don't know. What do you think? I think well, it was if Fred was a wrestler, he would have sold it and jumped into the crowd. Uh, right. <laughs> no, but yeah, I saw the video. What I think what happened was uh, security <laughs> came at the last second and uh, grabbed him just enough to kind of make it to where he didn't connect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Like yeah, yeah. you said, that's a good point. Like they've done wrestling in a ring in WWE. Yeah. Like so they know how to connect on a drop kick. Yeah, that's so, one of his go to moves. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's it had to be a reason why he didn't connect. I thought maybe he was drunk or well, maybe he was just been. joking. I don't know. But but the Fred Fury, well, the album, I mean, that's like, I'm like, there's, I don't know. It, it does seem like it's connected. It's right? trying yeah. to promote the album, huh? Yeah. Right. Oh. But, I mean, if you're going to promote the album by starting a beef, <laughs> like you Eminem did it with MGK and everyone else in the rap game, you're going Fred Durst. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, you should at least I was connect. surprised that they were even playing. I yeah. didn't know Limp Bizkit was still even out there yeah. doing things, you know? So, yeah. and this festival in New Jersey. <laughs> I wanted to go. We yeah. were on tour, but I. Uh, I'm a, he actually wanted to go. Yeah, yeah, we were talking about it. <laughs> Who else was on it? <laughs> it was like it was like I think Guar were on it. I love Guar was on it. Yeah. Mm. Okay. A lot of like the gathering crazy. too. Yeah. Yeah. How? Yeah. Okay. So let's get back to the gathering. Right. Was this your first gathering? Insane. It's both well, of our obviously, first. Obviously, living up yeah, to the name. First. Okay. So, <laughs> um, where did they have the gathering this year? It was outside of Columbus, I think. Yeah, right. Okay. In Ohio in a big uh, field. Yeah. 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 It's a big festival lineup and stuff. What was the estimated attendance this year? Was it what fifty thousand? I feel like there was a lot of people. Forty, fifty thousand. Forty, least. fifty thousand. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so now obviously it's straight up partying, right? Oh, so yeah. the juggalos, they know how to get down. Yeah. Uh, did you walk that crowd after your set and everything? You just part of we did. the the circus. Yeah. That was the best part, just kind of walking around and people and seeing watching? the love, like just watching people. And of course, I was a little, you know, I can't lie, I was a little scared yeah. because I had people tell me, "Oh, be careful, watch out, watch out." And um, walking through the crowd, and there was this one moment I remember the most is just people watching, and someone just says, "Hey," and I turn around like, "What did I do?" I turn around, and the guy's like, "I love you, man," and I was like, 
hey, love you too. <laughs> and we're just partying on. You know, he's handing me a beer. He's like, let's party. You know, so it's just a lot of love there, man. Yeah. Like, a lot of those guys get a really bad rap. It's just about love and, and appreciation for just being able to be together with people who are into what you're into. Well, their, their fan base is like social outcasts, right? And then you, they get there and they, uh, they're they surrounded by thousands of people that are just like them, mm-hmm. right? Who could be a considered trailer, could be like, you know, trash, the whole nine, right? This is kind of like what uh, a lot of... and. I will say this, like I know lots of ICP fans and lots of juggalos and everything, and kind of around the same kind of West Side neighborhoods that I grew up in, mm-hmm. right? So these are the ones that that felt like they didn't get the fair, you know, shake of things, mm-hmm. and this is their crew. But I've also seen this same kind of like um, family mentality with like Fish and their yeah. following, mm-hmm. you know. But I would say that the ICP, like gathering into Juggalo, sounds like there's more love there than uh, mm-hmm. some fish concerts because they could yeah. be kind of stuck up. Really? Yeah. Like, I didn't see any violence. I didn't see anybody get hurt. You like, saw people high as hell, though. I saw some, you know, people were definitely intoxicated. They were yeah. high. They were, I mean, the most disconcerting but, thing is that shooting off fireworks in, a, in the mosh pit all night. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> a lot of fun. No rules. You might as well have it in Mexico. <laughs> How was your set? Like, were they receptive and, you know, um, you know, participating the whole time. They Definitely. were, man. It was yeah. awesome. We played at like three in the morning, but they were still there, just excited and live as ever. Uh, we went out into the crowd, did a freestyle. It was so dope, just being a part of that that energy. It was great, man. Three and, in the morning, I loved it. I would take three in the morning over three in the afternoon any day. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, yeah. true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You were right about that. Yeah, I mean, they're definitely feeling it. And they probably probably look like a like magical dragon and stuff like that, depending on what they are. And you're going in the crowd, depending on what they're on. Yeah. And, yeah, you're flowing. I'd like to see that. <laughs> oh, dude, we, we had a great time, man. It was so awesome. And we met them and, and their label guys, and they were really nice and, like, appreciative. And it's just a good, a good crew of people. You know, they get a bad reputation, but it's, like, that fandom of that, you know, the subculture. It's, like... We can all come together and like fight this, this fight the darkness of like what what gives people fear. You know what right. I mean? Love mm-hmm. and like unity and creativity are such important forces, and that's how Mega Ren and I we bonded on that, and ICP's done that, and that's what I love about wrestling. Like what I've learned about it, it's mm-hmm. dope to me. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah. Well, Same I've, thing. Uh, wrestling fans have that family mentality, so it was like, oh, he's one of us. Like, yeah, cool. You know? Exactly. <laughs> well, I think uh, the biggest takeaway you can get from ICP is how they run their business Mm. because they're independent to the core besides you know when they were mainstream and they were associated with disney for just a hot minute they were continuing to you know have longevity 20 years after that and they did it all through their own merch their own licensing and putting out their own product and catering to their fan base building on that throwing their own festivals i mean that's just to anyone out there that's hungry that you know has fans Mm. like that's the way you do it that's inspiring man we listened to their audiobook you know during our drives and i was was so inspired by the hustle man just not giving up just not yeah. taking no for an answer you know right i mean jay says that so many times we just were not giving up right. you know like that's, even after homies yeah just like, <laughs> so we, sorry we're that's, not taking no for an answer I so can't, i can't get with that song ever ever <laughs> <laughs> just can't do it hey shout out to violent jay's brother jump steady because he's really he's done he's put his neck out for us a lot and he nice. took, he runs a label and he's like a really good dude who like does so much behind the scenes that you know he doesn't get a lot of credit but right. he's kind of like the mm. part of the brains behind that whole operation well you gotta so, someone's gotta be the worker bee because they're be. still you know artists they still have to create the songs and everything yeah. else so to put everything else uh, and it's in the family too yeah. so ICP is a family business yeah definitely <laughs> the Bruce Brothers <laughs> yep. yeah that's mm-hmm. great <laughs> yeah, alright well tough. one more thing uh, before you guys go to Cannes Deli tonight in Tucson uh, you know have you played the new WWE game no, Junior. man. I have a code ready, ready for me to download as soon as I get home, which will probably be t- late tonight or right. tomorrow. So um, I look forward to playing it. The graphics look great. I love the uh, the new gameplay modes they've added. Everything looks dope, man. Uh, those games are always like graphically like so ahead of the curve. Right. So they look like watching TV. Yeah. So uh, I'm I'm anxious to see what like new modes they've added and stuff like that and new wrestlers and yeah. So I'm really excited about it. I, yeah. I like last year's. Yeah, last year's was fun. Mm-hmm. I, I like to see the story mode and see how that turns story out. Story mode's good. And uh, how I'm, fast it looks. Load times are just an, an, an annoying to, to me, man. Right. I feel like in 2018, load times just shouldn't be a thing where you're like, oh, man, let me go make a sandwich now because uh-huh. this is going to be a while. Right. You're trying to edit your character. Edit his nose. Wait, please wait uh, 45 seconds to edit the nose and then the mouth. And then, you know, so it just gets to be a little much for me. Right. But that's like, but that has nothing to do with the actual gameplay. Once you get into a game, you're having a good time is, is it right? switch or what's the platform it's ps4 they did it on switch last year yeah yeah but, and, um, and xbox one 
mm-hmm. you're gonna create uh, your own car based off of you of and course then beat up i'll make i'll make a mega ran guy and then i'm gonna challenge xavier and uh <laughs> and the undertaker and everybody you gotta <laughs> teach lars how to play this and get him in you know i think you play the, the wrestling video yes. games will kind of get you the rest of the way cool yeah, yeah. i'm down I'd i'm, lo- gonna, I'd I'm lo- gonna get you into it i've <laughs> learned a lot about gaming from mega ran and um last time we were playing the michael jackson moonwalker on the raspberry <laughs> pi yeah yeah the <laughs> retro games are very <laughs> fun <Michael>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I love catching up with you guys, and you know, good luck in Thank everything you, that you're going to be doing here in the future. The new album th- that you guys have together is called The Dewey, Dewey Decibel, Decibel System, System. Yes. <laughs> and it's going to be out here and available when? I think no, no, early no, November, right? Early November, first week, uh, first Friday, November, I believe, it okay. will be out. And we're dropping so. videos and lots of so check out both of our social media. I'm MC Lars on on Twitter and Facebook and everything, and. Mega Ran. I'm at Mega Ran. At lo- Mega Ran. Yeah, it looks like Meg Ryan when you put it close together, <laughs> but it's not. It's Mega Ran. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, can we give a shout out to our, our tour mates, MC Frontline and Shay for the Dark Lord? That's right. Yeah, you guys having fun on this tour too? Heck yeah. Big yeah. time. This is so great to be out with. It's like great artists who are great professionals who are fun and you know it's been super dope and mad people nice. are coming like the, the tickets have been like impressive so shout nice. out to the fans yeah. well you guys are doing it again the right way organically building mm-hmm. it up and you have that passionate fan base and you're seeing that out there um and i've seen bands do it the opposite way you mm-hmm. know try to go for the quick cash <laughs> um get a little bit big and then that fan base kind of deplete and they can't go on tour yep. yeah so you know um i'm excited about the record together and see what it sounds like and Thank depending you. on when you guys watch this podcast we'll put the link to the album underneath so you guys can just quick check it out so. and then uh, steal it and buy a bunch of t-shirts or buy it <laughs> and then still buy a bunch of t-shirts yeah. tell your friends that's all we Either want way. Yeah, yeah mega ran mc large thanks again thanks, thanks man Steve. peace Go. keats